Chapter 2 Making of the Constitution Demand for a Constituent Assembly It was in 1934 that the idea of a Constituent Assembly for India was put forward for the first time by M. N. Roy, a pioneer of communist movement in India. In 1935, the Indian National Congress, INC, for the first time, officially demanded a constituent assembly to frame the constitution of India. In 1938, Jawaharlal Nehru, on behalf of the INC declared that the constitution of free India must be framed, without outside interference, by a constituent assembly elected on the basis of adult franchise. The demand was finally accepted in principle by the British government in what is known as the August Offer of 1940. In 1942, Sir Stafford Cripps, a member of the cabinet, came to India with a draft proposal of the British government on the framing of an independent constitution to be adopted after the World War II. The Cripps proposals were rejected by the Muslim League, which wanted India to be divided into two autonomous states with two separate constituent assemblies. Finally, a cabinet mission was sent to India. While it rejected the idea of two constituent assemblies, it put forth a scheme for the constituent assembly which more or less satisfied the Muslim League. Composition of the Constituent Assembly The Constituent Assembly was constituted in November 1946 under the scheme formulated by the Cabinet Mission Plan. The features of the scheme were 1. The total strength of the Constituent Assembly was to be 389. Of these, 296 seats were to be allotted to British India and 93 seats to the princely states. Out of 296 seats allotted to the British India, 292 members were to be drawn from the 11 Governor's Provinces and 4 from the 4 Chief Commissioner's Provinces, one from each. Two, each province and princely state, or group of states in case of small states, were to be allotted seats in proportion to their respective population. Roughly, one seat was to be allotted for every million population. Three, seats allocated to each British province were to be divided among the three principal communities, Muslims, Sikhs and General, all except Muslims and Sikhs in proportion to their population. 4. The representatives of each community were to be elected by members of that community in the Provincial Legislative Assembly and voting was to be by the method of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. 5. The representatives of the princely states were to be nominated by the heads of the princely states. It is, thus, clear that the Constituent Assembly was to be a partly elected and partly nominated body. Moreover, the members were to be indirectly elected by the members of the Provincial Assemblies, who themselves were elected on a limited franchise. The elections to the Constituent Assembly, for 296 seats allotted to the British Indian Provinces, were held in July to August 1946. The Indian National Congress won 208 seats, the Muslim League 73 seats and the small groups and independents got the remaining 15 seats. However, the 93 seats allotted to the princely states were not filled as they decided to stay away from the Constituent Assembly. Although the Constituent Assembly was not directly elected by the people of India on the basis of adult franchise, the assembly comprised representatives of all sections of the Indian society, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Parsis, Anglo-Indians, Indian Christians, SCs, STs including women of all these sections. The assembly included all important personalities of India at that time, with the exception of Mahatma Gandhi. Working of the Constituent Assembly 
The Constituent Assembly held its first meeting on 9th December 1946. The Muslim League boycotted the meeting and insisted on a separate state of Pakistan. The meeting was, thus, attended by only 211 members. Dr. Satchidanand Sinha, the oldest member, was elected as the temporary president of the assembly following the French practice. Later, Dr. Rajendra Prasad was elected as the president of the assembly. Similarly, both H.C. Mukherjee and V.T. Krishnamachari were elected as the vice presidents of the assembly. In other words, the assembly had two vice presidents. Objectives Resolution On 13 December 1946, Jawaharlal Nehru moved the historic objectives resolution in the assembly. It laid down the fundamentals and philosophy of the constitutional structure. It read, 1. This constituent assembly declares its firm and solemn resolve to proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic and to draw up for her future governance a constitution. 2. Where in the territories that now comprise British India, the territories that now form the Indian states and such other parts of India as are outside India and the states as well as other territories as are willing to be constituted into the independent sovereign India shall be a union of them all and three where in the said territories whether with their present boundaries or with such others as may be determined by the constituent assembly and thereafter according to the law of the constitution, shall poses and retain the status of autonomous units together, with residuary powers, and exercise all powers and functions of government and administration save and accept such powers and functions as are vested in all assigned to the union or as are inherent or implied in the union or resulting. Therefrom and 4. Wherein all power and authority of the sovereign independent India, its constituent parts and organs of government are derived from the people and 5. Wherein shall be guaranteed and secured to all the people of India justice, social, economic and political equality of status of opportunity, and before the law, freedom of thought, expression, belief, faith, worship, vocation, association and action, subject to law and public morality, and 6. Wherein adequate safeguards shall be provided for minorities, backward and tribal areas, and depressed and other backward classes, and 7. Whereby shall be maintained the integrity of the territory of the Republic and its sovereign rights on land, sea and air according to justice and the law of civilized nations, and 8. This ancient land attains its rightful and honored place in the world and makes its full and willing contribution to the promotion of world peace and the welfare of mankind. This resolution was unanimously adopted by the Assembly on 22nd January 1947. It influenced the eventual shaping of the Constitution through all its subsequent stages. Its modified version forms the preamble of the present Constitution. Changes by the Independence Act The representatives of the princely states who had stayed away from the Constituent Assembly, gradually joined it. On 28 April 1947, representatives of the six states were part of the Assembly. After the acceptance of the Mountbatten Plan of 3 June 1947, for the partition of the country, the representatives of most of the other princely states took their seats in the Assembly. The members of the Muslim League from the Indian Dominion also entered the Assembly. The Indian Independence Act of 1947 made the following three changes in the position of the Assembly. 
One, the assembly was made a fully sovereign body, which could frame any constitution it pleased. The act empowered the assembly to abrogate or alter any law made by the British Parliament in relation to India. Two, the assembly also became a legislative body. In other words, two separate functions were assigned to the assembly, that is, making of the constitution for free India and enacting of ordinary laws for the country. These two tasks were to be performed on separate days. Thus, the assembly became the first parliament of free India, Dominion Legislature. Whenever the assembly met as the constituent body, it was chaired by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, and when it met as the legislative body, it was chaired by G. V. Mavlankar. These two functions continued till 26 November 1949, when the task of making the constitution was over. 3. The Muslim League members, hailing from the areas included in the Pakistan, withdrew from the Constituent Assembly for India. Consequently, the total strength of the Assembly came down to 299 as against 389 originally fixed in 1946 under the Cabinet Mission Plan. The strength of the Indian provinces, formerly British provinces, was reduced from 296 to 229 and those of the princely states from 93 to 70. The statewise membership of the Assembly, as on 31st December 1947, is shown in Table 2.4 of this chapter. Other functions performed in addition to the making of the constitution and enacting of ordinary laws, the Constituent Assembly also performed the following functions. 1. It ratified the India's membership of the Commonwealth in May 1949. 2. It adopted the national flag on 22nd July 1947. 3. It adopted the National Anthem on 24th January 1950. 4. It adopted the National Song on, on 24th January 1950. 5. It elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as the first President of India on 24th January 1950. 11 sessions over two years, 11 months and 18 days. The constitution makers had gone through the constitutions of about 60 countries and the draft constitution was considered for 114 days. The total expenditure incurred on making the constitution amounted to 64 lakh rupees. On 24 January 1950, the constituent assembly held its final session. It, however, did not end and continued as the Provisional Parliament of India from 26 January 1950 till the formation of new parliament after the first general elections in 1951-52. Committees of the Constituent Assembly The Constituent Assembly appointed a number of committees to deal with different tasks of constitution making. Out of these, Eight were major committees and the others were minor committees. The names of these committees and their chairmen are given below. Major Committees 1. Union Powers Committee Jawaharlal Nehru 2. Union Constitution Committee Jawaharlal Nehru 3. Provincial Constitution Committee Sardar Patel 4. Drafting Committee Dr. B. R. Ambedkar 5. Advisory Committee on Fundamental Rights, Minorities and Tribal and Excluded Areas Sardar Patel This committee had the following five subcommittees A. Fundamental Rights Subcommittee J. B. Kripalni B. 
माइनॉरिटी सब कमिटी एच सी मुखर्जी सी नॉर्थ ईस्ट फ्रंटियर ट्राइबल एरियाज एंड असम एक्सक्लूडेड एंड पार्शली एक्सक्लूडेड एरियाज सब कमिटी गोपीनाथ बारदोलुई डी एक्सक्लूडेड एंड पार्शली एक्सक्लूडेड एरियाज अदर देन दोज इन असम सब कमिटी ए वी ठक्कर ई नॉर्थ वेस्ट फ्रंटियर ट्राइबल एरियाज सब कमिटी सिक्स रूल्स ऑफ प्रोसीजर कमिटी डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद सेवन स्टेट्स कमिटी कमिटी फॉर नेगोशिएटिंग विद स्टेट्स जवाहरलाल नेहरू एट स्टीयरिंग कमिटी कमिटी डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद माइनर कमिटीज वन अ फाइनेंस एंड स्टाफ कमिटी डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद टू क्रिडेंशियल्स कमिटी अल्लाडी कृष्णा स्वामी अयर थ्री हाउस कमिटी बी पट्टा बी सितार मैया फोर ऑर्डर ऑफ बिजनेस कमिटी डॉक्टर के एम मुंशी फाइव एडहॉक कमिटी ऑन द नेशनल फ्लैग डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद सिक्स कमिटी ऑन द फंक्शन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट असेंबली जी वी मावलंकर Seven ad hoc committee on the Supreme Court S Vardhachari not an assembly member Eight committee on chief commissioners provinces B Patta B Sitarmaya Nine expert committee on the fin financial provisions of the union constitution Nalini Ranjan Sarkar not an assembly member Ten linguistic provinces commission S Kader not an assembly member 11th special committee to examine the draft constitution jawaharlal nehru 12th press gallery committee usha nath sen 13th ad hoc committee on citizenship s vardachari not an assembly member drafting committee among all the committees of the constituent assembly the most important committee was the drafting committee set up on 29th august 1947 It was this committee that was entrusted with the task of preparing a draft of the new constitution. It consisted of seven members. They were: one, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Chairman; two, N. Gopal Swami Iyengar; three, Alladi Krishna Swami Iyer; four, Dr. K. M. Munshi; five, Syed Muhammad Sadulla; six, N. Madhva Rao. He replaced B L Mitter who resigned due to ill health. Seven T T Krishnamachari. He replaced D P Khetan who died in 1948. The drafting committee, after taking into consideration the proposals of the various committees, prepared the first draft of the Constitution of India, which was published in February 1948. The people of India were given eight months to discuss the draft. and propose amendments in the light of the public comments criticisms and suggestions the drafting committee prepared a second draft which was published in october 1948 the drafting committee took less than 6 months to prepare its draft in all it sat only for 141 days enactment of the constitution Dr B R Ambedkar introduced the final draft of the constitution in the assembly on 4th November 1948 first reading the assembly had a general discussion on it for 5 days till 9th November 1948 the second reading clause by clause consideration started on 15th November 1948 and ended on 17th October 1949 During this stage as many as 7653 amendments were proposed and 2473 were actually discussed in the assembly The third reading of the draft started on 14th November 
Dr. B. R. Ambedkar moved a motion. The constitution, as settled by the assembly, be passed. The motion on draft constitution was declared as passed on 26th November 1949 and received the signatures of the members and the president. Out of a total 299 members of the assembly, only 284 were actually present on that day and signed the constitution. This is also the date mentioned in the preamble as the date on which the people of India in the constituent assembly adopted, enacted and gave to themselves this constitution. The constitution as adopted on 26th November 1949 contained a preamble, 395 articles and 8 schedules. The preamble was enacted after the entire constitution was already enacted. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, the then law minister, piloted the draft constitution in the assembly. He took a very prominent part in the deliberations of the assembly. He was known for his logical, forceful and persuasive arguments on the floor of the assembly. He is recognized as the father of the constitution of India. This brilliant writer, constitutional expert, undisputed leader of the scheduled castes, and the chief architect of the constitution of India is also known as a modern Manu. Enforcement of the Constitution Some provisions of the Constitution pertaining to citizenship, elections, provisional parliament, temporary and transitional provisions, and short title contained in Articles 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 324, 366, 367, 379, 380, 388, 391, 392 and 393 came into force on 26 November 1949 itself. The remaining provisions, the major part of the constitution came into force on 26 January 1950. This day is referred to in the constitution as the date of its commencement and celebrated as the Republic Day. With the commencement of the Constitution, the Indian Independence Act of 1947 and the Government of India Act of 1935, with all enactments amending or supplementing the latter Act, repeal. The abolition of Privy Council Jurisdiction Act, 1949, was however continued. Continued. Experts Committee of the Congress While elections to the Constituent Assembly were still in progress, on 8 July 1946, the Congress Party, Indian National Congress, appointed an Experts Committee for the purpose of preparing material for the Constituent Assembly. This committee consisted of the following members. 1. Jawaharlal Nehru, Chairman 2. M. Asaf Ali 3. K. M. Munshi 4. N. Gopalaswami Ayengar 5. K. T. Shah 6. D. R. Gargil 7. Humayu Kabir 8. K. Santhanam Later, on the chairman's proposal, it was resolved that Krishna Kripalni be co-opted as member and convener of the committee. The committee had two sittings, the first at New Delhi from July 20th to 22nd, 1946 and the second at Bombay from August 15 to 17, 1946. Apart from a number of notes prepared by its members, the committee discussed the procedure to be adopted by the Constituent Assembly, the question of the appointment of various committees, 
and the draft of a resolution on the objectives of the constitution to be moved during the first session of the constituent assembly on the role played by this committee in the making of the constitution granville austin a british constitutional expert observed it was the congress experts committee that set india on the road to her present constitution the committee members working within the framework of the cabinet mission scheme made general suggestions about autonomous areas the powers of provincial governments and the center and about such issues as the princely states and the amending power they also drafted a resolution closely resembling the objectives resolution criticism of the constituent assembly the critics have criticized the constituent assembly on various grounds these are as follows one not a representative body the critics have argued that the constituent assembly was not a representative body as its members were not directly elected by the people of india on the basis of universal adult franchise two not a sovereign body the critics maintained that the constituent assembly was not a sovereign body as it was created by the proposals of the british government further they said that the assembly held its sessions with the permission of the british government three time consuming according to the critics the constituent assembly took unduly long time to make the constitution they stated that the framers of the american constitution took only 4 months to complete their work in this context najiruddin ahmed a member of the constituent assembly coined a new name for the drafting committee to show his contempt for it he called it a drifting committee four dominated by congress the critics charged that the constituent assembly was dominated by the congress party granville austin an american constitutional expert remarked the constituent assembly was a one party body in an essentially one party country the assembly was the congress and the congress was india five lawyer politician domination it is also maintained by the critics that the constituent assembly was dominated by lawyers and politicians they pointed out that other sections of the society were not sufficiently represented this to them is the main reason for the bulkiness and complicated language of the constitution six dominated by hindus according to some critics the constituent assembly was a hindu dominated body lord viscount simon called it a body of hindus similarly winston churchill commented that the constituent assembly represented only one major community in india important facts one elephant was adopted as the symbol seal of the constituent assembly Two Serbian Ro was appointed as the constitutional adviser, legal adviser to the Constituent Assembly. Three H V R Ayengar was the secretary to the Constituent Assembly. Four S N Mukherjee was the chief draftsman of the Constitution in the Constituent Assembly. Five Prem Bihari Narayan Rajada was the calligrapher of the Indian Constitution. The original constitution was handwritten by him in a flowing italic style. 6. The original version was beautified and decorated by artists from Shantiniketan including Nand Lal Bose and Bihar Ram Manohar Sinha. 7. Bihar Ram Manohar Sinha illuminated, beautified and ornamented the original preamble calligraphed by Prem Bihari Narayan Rajada. Eight, the calligraphy of the Hindi version of the original constitution was done by Vasant Krishan Vidya and elegantly decorated and illuminated by Nand Lal Bose. Hindi text of the constitution. Originally, the constitution of India did not make any provision with respect to an authoritative text of the constitution in the Hindi language. later 
A provision in this regard was made by the 58th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1987. This amendment inserted a new Article 394- in the last part of the Constitution I, Part 22. This article contains the following provisions. 1. The President shall cause to be published under his authority. I. The translation of the Constitution in Hindi language. The modifications which are necessary to bring it in conformity with the language, style and terminology adopted in the authoritative texts of the Central Acts in Hindi can be made in it. All the amendments of the Constitution made before such publication should be incorporated in it. 2. The translation in Hindi of every amendment of the Constitution made in English. 2. The translation of the Constitution and its every amendment published shall be construed to have the same meaning as the original text in English. If any difficulty arises in this matter, the precedent shall cause the Hindi text to be revised suitably. 3. The translation of the Constitution and its every amendment published shall be deemed to be, for all purposes, its authoritative text in Hindi.